power now. Yeah, prepare to copy my grid. Whiskey Delta, 91430, break, 52903. Behind the sacks, Starting to burn. They're getting the ammunition from the house right now. Stay in the middle. All right, spread out, all right? Spread out, stay spread. That way if he shoots it again, he only gets one of us. Stay spread. Fuck. Roger, just make sure we keep that uh, right flank security. We got guys flanking hard on your uh, right flank. Roger, I copy guys flanking hard on our flank. Roger, you're about to get the brunt of it, over. Come on, come on. All right, there, let's go. Go, go, go. Get on line. Contact, get on contact. Line. Saw gonna flex, flex right. Immediately flex right. Immediately flex right. Right there, right there. Get that saw up. How'd you lose the lens? My glasses were already broken, and when I was getting my dark eye pro out of the uh, movement to contact last iteration, uh -huh. it fell out. So we're talking a week and a half ago. Roger. Goodness gracious, Barbara. Would you have other glasses that you wear at home? <laughs> so, so now you're missing a lens. It means when you go back to civilian life, you're still going to be missing a lens, right? 
Yes, sir. Uh, uh, as far as the camera, gosh, I got it. I this isn't a military thing, guys. <laughs> individual things. You have to fucking correct that. Like your own self. You have to be like, hey, when I go back, I'm only going to have one lens. I got work. I got other things. I got to drive. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Like, I shouldn't have to preach to you guys how to be grown men. And that's what I, this conversation is just teaching you how to be a grown man. It has nothing to do with military. Gentlemen, nobody's going to fucking care about you more than you. So if you don't care about you, and we're not tracking on it, we're not going to push it because we don't know. Does that make sense? All right. What happened with Barber at training, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's unacceptable, but for me as a leader, it's something that I have to correct. Being a citizen soldier, we all have our civilian obligations that we have in addition to our military duties. For instance, on this last appointment myself, I was a marketing director. Colt Floyd was a combatives and weapons instructor. Damon Lehan was the x-ray tech at a hospital. Jared Colson was a correctional officer. Michael Prince was a police officer. He was the first canine officer of his precinct. Tyler Brown was a mechanic. So you have this whole group of diverse individuals who on the civilian side are doing regular, normal, everyday stuff. And now six months later, they're on the side of a mountain fighting alongside each other in some of the worst conditions that you can think of. What's up, man? So today I'm getting together with Colt Floyd and Tyler Brown, which are two guys that I deployed with back in 2011. I'm gonna throw some burgers on. You guys want some broths too? Absolutely. All right. For me, one thing that I always felt like that I got in for was to deploy at some point in time. So then to have an opportunity to get on this one with the guard seemed like kind of a natural thing. And I don't think it still really hit me. You know, we're actually going on deployment, going to Afghanistan, going to be in some tough stuff. And uh, even up to Shelby. And my impression of Shelby when we got there was just like, you got to be kidding me. You know, it's going to get us ready for war. Yeah, this is going to get us ready for war. That is very good. It's just a tad bit different from Afghanistan and Lagman province. Okie <laughs> just, just, just a little. Let's take away the mountains, it was the same. <laughs> take, take away the mountains. <laughs> it was the exact same thing. All right, fire us, go ahead and engage your target. Engage your target. Camp Shelby sucked for the terrain aspect, but we had a lot of time to really build that platoon relationship, you know, amongst ourselves. <laughs> That's where the whole bond starts. Right there, right there, you know, Shelby, that's where it really all started. I remember one day Sergeant Wolf had everybody grab LT Lehan and uh, duck him in the mud as an introductory to be in first platoon's platoon leader. Lehan's still smiling. Oh, get him! Beans, get him! Just the way that LT Lehan handled that really personified the camaraderie we would have and the brotherhood that would be necessary to, to get to their appointment. Yeah, I'd say Lehan helped me the most because I felt kind of lost first coming in. My first drill with you guys was in January, right before we left. The next thing I remember is us being told, hey, we're only taking two platoons to to Najil, and we ended up going in way undermanned. This being my first appointment, I definitely looked up to several individuals for uh, leadership and guidance. LT Lehan was one of them, Sergeant Eric Wolf. And Sergeant Colson. Sergeant Colson wasn't your typical leader. Tons of experience and the most absurd appetite. Dude always had food. 15 years I've been doing this. 
I've been through a lot of fucking life experiences that shape the way I look at things, that change my outlook, my views, my perspectives, the way I problem solve. That's one thing that the guard is able to do very effectively. We're able to look at things practically and not just according to a manual. Does that make sense? We'd heard that we were gonna be walking into a firestorm in Najil. We'd heard stories about Najil. We'd heard it was, a, it was a hot area. So we were prepared. We were prepared to walk into a shit storm. Cabin Najil, our new home for the next 10, 11 months. So I'll never forget, <laughs> 4 o'clock in the morning hits, and they start their, their call to prayer. And that's all you could hear. It was just silent other than that. And uh, that, was kind of, that was kind of freaky. The first full day, we would have our first mission to go to the, the cell tower. We quickly learned that the cell towers would be a huge focus point for the Taliban. I had sat down with the outgoing platoon leader. He told me time and time again, he's like, they're out there. You get to this point, you're going to get hit. You get to that point, you're going to get hit. And you just kind of have this eerie feeling like you're being watched. The enemy maneuver pretty quick on those mountains. They've been running those mountains for years and years. They could have high ground on you um, in, a, in a pretty quick time, and that's, that's pretty scary. How much further do we got? See, right up there. Come on, you about 200 meters. All right. Nobody shot at us. It was just hot as shit, and that was it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I feel like I'm about to puke. Yeah, well, welcome to Afghanistan. You good to make it up to that cell tower? Yeah, I'll make it. I'll make it. All right. All sip right. water. Sip some water. All right. All right. It's just so mountainous. It's so mountainous. Everywhere is up. <laughs> Everywhere you walk is up. We went back to the cob and had tacos or whatever we had that day and wrapped it up and called it at night. It was a good amount of time where it was just dead nothing. We'd go out on patrols and no traffic for almost a good month. They were watching us. They made us feel comfortable, and maybe we got too comfortable. Hey, that, that monkey really likes you. I may or may not have been commentating a little bit. Okay, so we're back here live on location. Oh, Lieutenant Lee here. It's good. Hold us. We got Prince on station. Okay. Yeah. Let's right blow in. this fighting position. Go. Woo! <laughs> Pull the pin. Pull the pin. <laughs> I pulled the pin. Still there. Let's do it again. Yeah, I got one more. I got one more. Let's I got do it. more. What's your assessment on this, Prince? I like it. I'm having fun. Nice. Right. Come on. <laughs> really? <laughs> For that first month, everything was silent. We didn't see the enemy. We didn't hear the enemy. It felt like it was just my brothers and me alone in the mountains. You know, war, war is boring until it's punctured by these moments of heart-stopping terror. July 11th, 11th. that's the date that I'll never forget. 
The main element was gonna do a key leader engagement just south of Tilly. We were selected to do the overwatch position for that mission. Punisher base, 3-6. Be advised, SP time now. Got one, three US packs. Oh, Alpha spread out. Yeah, don't bunch it up back there. Keep your distance. In, in Afghanistan, the one thing that was very important is to always maintain the high ground. It's hard to get high ground in Afghanistan because in that country, there's always higher ground. Hey, keep your distance. Typically, that higher ground is occupied by the enemy. Head of the swivel, guys. We moved into our OP position. There wasn't shit for cover and concealment. 2-1 Alpha for 2-1. Be advised. Our element is in position. I'll copy over. We would do key leader engagements with uh, the village leaders or the elders. St. Hand would have us all stay back. I would even stay back, and I'm always by his side. There's Lee Hand crossing. All right, let's stay alert. Keep your eyes peeled. He'd be the one walking up to that key leader and introducing himself to let them know that we're here, we're friends, we want to get the Taliban out of the area. Looks like okay, Lee wrapping up. Uh, basically, our mission was to come meet with the, uh, the village mayor, link up with him, see what kind of actions have been going on as far as uh, Taliban and Indian insurgency. Uh, so we came out, I talked to him, asked him for things that they, he may need for the village. Uh, he told us he needed security and it developed from there that they had some suspicious looking people that he did not know well that were living in, within the village. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to add, sir? Yeah. All right, appreciate you doing it. Thank you, Bravo 7. Need to please zero more mics to get all these people hiding. Main element preparing to exit by an exit, and then once we get those hides complete, then we'll turn around and we'll end. Yo, you hear that? Hear what? Where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> was, holy shit, that's a machine gun. And I just threw my stuff down, you know, hit the ground, started returning fire. We started taking fire from three different points on the high ground. Mountains, three different angles. That's the first time I heard this sound. Bullets are impacting this giant boulder. And it becomes immediately clear that I'm not being guarded by the rock, I'm guarding the rock. Fragments chipping away in front of our faces. Ah. Damn, where is that coming from? Hey, I'm in a bad spot, and I gotta move. It was very clear at that point that we were kind of sitting ducks, and we needed to move. LT Brown spotted a kind of a courtyard that was down the mountain. The problem was just a straight run and a prayer Seven. down a mountain that offered no protection. Hey, listen, we got to bound back, all right? LT just looks at us and he goes, Do you want to say go, go? Hey, pick out a spot. Know where you're going before you get up. As soon as we start shooting, go, all right? All right. Hey, cover us, cover us. I got you cover, go. Go, 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 go. Go, no, move it. Move it, let's go. Let's go, bro, Let's go. I had the other guys move first, and I was the last one to go. And I already had a rock picked out before I got up. Hey, I'm moving back. I'm moving back. The rounds were just flying by us left and right. 
around. This went right by my face. All right, set. Two seven, two seven, it's three six. Hey, we're about halfway back to you, all right? We finally made it to cover. Everybody was OK. And while the guys were laying out fire, I was calling back to the cop, trying to work in air support. Five seconds. Ooh, that was quick. Hey, Bob's inbound. Yeah! Damn, Viper 1-6, Viper 1-6, that's a good impact. Break, break, hectic two fours, two eight. It was definitely life or death. I mean, there was no way we were getting out of that situation any other way outside of the air support. LT Brown leadership ability was really telling at that point. Here he is, a young second lieutenant. He had no more war experience than most of us. But yet when he spoke, there was no question. And we all knew that he had made the decision and that's what we were gonna do. You know, it definitely changed everybody right then and there within a matter of seconds. Later on in the deployment, we would patrol that area. We would patrol the, that road. And I would look back on that high ground, that OP that we had occupied, and I thought to myself, how the fuck did none of us get waxed that day? You know what I mean? How did none of us die? It was either <laughs> sheer coincidence, luck, divine providence, however you want to look at it. But uh, somebody should have died that day. Somebody should have died. And if the tables were turned, if it was us that occupied those high ground positions, we would have waxed every single one of them. After that, all hell just broke loose. The Mayo Valley was OK until you got to a certain point. And as soon as you hit Candy Air Parma 1, you know, you knew shit was going to hit the fan. We were heading to that area to get them to come out and fight. Up to that point, we were having a hard time identifying where these guys were shooting from. Where's it at? Call it out! Call it out! At first, it was only small arms fire, and then an RPG hits the turret with my platoon sergeant in it. Oh, shit. That was right over my head. Hey, I just received fire from us. Three o'clock. Right over my head. Sergeant Burns' turret in his vehicle was blown to shreds. They call it over the radio, you know, he's, we think his arms broke, the turret's off the truck. Move it, let's go! So we get called out to plus them up and provide extra security. By the time that uh, we got out to their position, bombs had already been dropped to defuse the situation. And at that time, Lieutenant Brown had got the call from command to do a BDA, a battle damage assessment. 2-1 Bravo, 3-6. Go for 2-1 Bravo. Hey, 2-1 Bravo, can you with your 2-6 element? I need you guys to push up and uh, conduct a BDA where that bomb just hit. Hey, round to 3-6, get copy. 2-1 Bravo, out. 3-6, 2-1 Alpha, over. That's 3 6 go ahead. Roger, be advised. We're Oscar Mike, over. Roger that. I need you guys to uh, hurry as fast as possible. Roger. We found the best route we could up the mountain. It was rugged terrain. Better hurry up before we get our truck blown up. There's always a sense of urgency. Just think about those trucks being stopped. I mean, immediately, they're soft targets. It was just a matter of time, I felt, before an RPG was just going to rip to the side of the, of the vehicle. That corner is way too close for my comfort, brother. There's something moving in that cornfield, man. All right, keep your eyes peeled. Keep your eyes peeled. What's that? That was an RPG. Fuck. Fuck. We need those guys. 
We gotta move. We gotta move. We can't stay here. I can't. I can't. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. Come that cornfield right there. Hey, who's above us? Hey, short driver, move. Move. Sir, how will we get down? Contact. Contact. Where's it? Oh, sh hey, 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 shut, shut up, shut up. Let's move down in that ravine right there. Reconsolidate from there, Roger. Yeah, Roger. All right, get your guys. Hey, I'm out. I'm out. I need more rounds. I need another full of ammo. Oh. There it was, an RPG right beside us. RPG, damn yeah. it. Roger, I'm relaying. This is a serious kick. We need air support like an hour to go over. Oh, fuck me. We ran into about a 35-foot drop-off, just straight down, straight drop-off. There was only one way that we were going to leave that mountain, and that was jumping down this, this cliff. We got to go on that. Yeah, there's, there's enemy combatants on the other side of this ridge over here firing down on the bill. We got to go down. We got to go down. OK. How are we going to do that? We got to right. shut our gear. The whole time we were sitting there, rounds are just coming off left and right. But there's no way we were leaving until until we got those guys down. There's muzzle flashes coming from all over that fucking cornfield. Look at jammed again. I hate this thing. Shit. Just had around crack over my head and this thing's jammed. Uh, it's jammed. Burn, it's hey, take it easy, take it easy. Take it slow, take it slow. Hey, just take it down. Shit, 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 shit. Oh. I'm good, I'm good. You alright? I think it's fucked up, dude. Hey, hey, everybody good? Yeah. You broken bones? No. Alright, come on. Let's right. go. Let's go. 361 Bravo, we have all uh, made it uh, down the cliff and uh, suited back up, and we are now headed back toward your direction, toward the truck on the road. How copy? Air support's on their way. Here come the birds. 37 is the Air support this bitch. Yeah. Well, you know, that's what happens when people shoot at you. Fuck. No problem. What's the location? Roger, we're coming up right behind you uh, in the truck right now. We all made it. We all made it off the, the cliff. I remember thinking after I came home, I, I swore to myself I was never going to climb another flight of fucking stairs for the rest of my life. I was going to take the elevator everywhere I went just because I was so damn tired of climbing. When I commissioned, I had two contracts set in front of me, the fire brigade and the infantry brigade. So I'm sitting across the desk from the, the female that was there. And she's like, all right, you get 10 grand to go to the fire brigade, but you have to give it up to go to the infantry brigade. And that was the first time I'd heard that, that I had to give up my bonus. And I was like, gosh, dang. But I wanted to go to ranger school. So, you know, I picked, I picked the infantry. Looking back on it now, like, do you ever think to yourself, I should have took the 10 grand? <laughs> no, no, never, man. 
I don't, I don't regret giving that up, not one second. I wouldn't trade it for nothing. On the morning of August 14th, we were set on a mission to do convoy security for a support company. Our mission was to move uh, supplies up to Allengar District Center uh, along Route Iowa. All red elements, all red elements. Go ahead and move out. Uh, we have been cleared. On the way to the, the FOB, we, we had some intense talks in that truck. I remember Lieutenant Lehan telling us that uh, he got off the phone with his daughter, I believe the night before, that her pet passed away. And so he was dealing with that. And he just he wanted to be there to help with his daughter and give her the support. Hey, you guys, what are you up to? I am uh, I'm in a truck, an army truck. Anyways, I thought I'd give you guys a video Say hi, and I miss you guys. Love you. I'll talk to you later. Love you. Bye. On the way up to Allen Guard District Center, we had no issues. No sights, no uh, true intel of any possible uh, IEDs being set up. The IED threat was, it was always there for us. You're just anticipating that, that detonation on your truck. Arrived at the uh, Allen Guard DC on time. Echo Company offloaded their trucks. Unloading took a little bit longer than we thought, and we really needed to get out. So Tentley had decided that we were going to be lead vehicle. Hey, Ethan, Daddy. Just thought I'd say hi. Hi, Ethan. Hi, Ethan. Love you, buddy. All right, keep him on hill. Love you. Being the first in the convoy, me and Lieutenant Lee Hand would dismount, do our checks on certain areas. If something didn't look right, we would just get out, check it, and then if it was good, we'd get back in and drive off. Red one, this is red seven. You need to go ahead and hold the convoy and break. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, go ahead and get your dismounts out. You know, we need to go ahead and start clearing the route uh, for IEDs. Uh, break. MC, how are you? I walk behind us. There you go. Report anything uh, out of the ordinary uh, back up to me, and I'll relay to Red 6 and up to the tie number. You see anything? I don't see anything. Just garbage? Yeah. Oh. Roger, Red 1, I copy. Uh, route to clear. Let's go ahead and load up the dismount and uh, continue on with the mission. Leon, we good to start moving? They start going. We're good. He's got, he's got, no, he's got room, sir. I'm trying to get some speed to get up the hill. Hey driver, when you stop, man, you gotta uh, try to be aware of your surroundings. Red six, red six. Yeah. 
Red 6, Red 6, this is Red 7, over. Dismounts, I'm getting negative response from Red 6. We were all buckled in, hanging upside down, trying to think to yourself what just happened. And we kept screaming for Tentley Hand, and, and we weren't hearing anything. You know, you just, you just knew. Medic, we need to stop responding. Your arm is anywhere else hurt. Your chest, your fucking your arms, legs. legs. That's right, this is two three. Hey, get his fucking kid off. The noise of that IED going off sounded like no other explosion I'd ever heard before. I tried four or five times, if not more, to try to raise his truck on the radio. Red 6, Red 6, this is Red 7, over. Native contact, Red 7 out. All I ever got back was static. One thing that, st that sticks to me about uh, Damon was just his smirk. <laughs> no matter what was going on, good or bad, he always smirked. <laughs> All right, everybody down. Follow for camera. Follow for camera. Welcome to first two, sir. <laughs> right. He was truly irreplaceable. He was the glue that kept, kept us together. I would say we were best friends. I had to cram all those emotions down deep inside to continue on the mission. The memorial service for LT Leanne was going to be at Metal Arm. It was about a three, four hour drive. We wanted to make sure that we were there so we could pay our respects to an incredible leader. I think we were almost halfway down there, and I'm in the lead vehicle with Sergeant Prince. Prince is in the turret, and we're slowly creeping up a hill, and Prince tells me to stop, tells us to stop, so Paul stops the vehicle. Really? Another IED? This is right here. I'm looking at Yeah. Is it this little paper bag thing? Yeah, it's a paper bag thing. Yeah, with fucking wire truck on it? Yeah. Ball back. Yeah, Roger, 2 1 Bravo. Uh, be advised, Prince has eyes on. That's a good fucking spot. Hey, good job, Prince. I wouldn't even seen that, man. Hey, it's not Prince. We finally get a call from battalion telling us to, to hold tight. EOD's on the way. We decided to set up 360 security around the IED. What's up, my nigga? 2 1 Bravo, it's 3 6, over. Where'd you go, 2 1 Bravo? Hey, uh, you want to 2-7 element and see if I can get some of you guys to push to the high ground to uh, provide security. Over. Right after you come. Two on Bravo, it's 3-6. Hey, let me know when you guys uh, get set in. Break. Right after you get copy. RPG! Hey, hey, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. 
got to go. 36 AB advised that that, uh, that RPG hit about 30 meters from us. Break. We're going to uh, push up. Then we're going to try to get a, uh, a clear view across the river. How copy? Hear me, hear me. Come on, come on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Hey, Brent. Hey. Hey, they'll shoot from the other side of the river. Hey, look on the other side. Got it. Hey, hey. Go grab some ammo from the truck. Hey, hurry up. Damn it. Show me some movement. <laughs> All right. Now there's, there's buildings up there. There's buildings up there. OK. All right. We're in this dangerous situation. You got three IDs that are daisy chained together. And the trigger man's out there still somewhere. At any point in time, they could set these off. 3-6, three, 3-6, six, three, six, uh, 2 on Bravo. Hey, 3-6, go ahead. Roger, 3-6, to be advised that there's some buildings up here that we're going to have to clear. Once we get them cleared, let's try to establish a clear line of sight <laughs> on that road over Washington to the rest of the convoy. How copy? Hey, Roger, I copy all. Don't push too far into that village. Over. <laughs> all right. All right, no, I'm right behind you. I'm right behind you. I'm right behind you. All right. Is it clear? See all clear, all clear. All right. You see anything? All right, let's move to the next one. Now, see that? See that clearing right there? We can see over the road. I'm taking over here. Hand me. Come over here. Sit up right there. Roger, be advisor, setting in position. How copy? Hey, Prince, you got eyes on those guys over there? Hey, make sure you're watching down in that group of trees. Hey, sir, sir, cross the way. Moving on the roof. What? You good? Thomas, you good? All right. Hey, we got a guy on the roof. Hey. Amy, get up here, get up here. No, right across the river. Right down the roof. 3-6, be advised, uh, directly to our uh, right, we have some villages. It looks like there's an uh, individual on the roof. We'll keep you advised of the situation. How copy? Roger that, 2-1 Bravo. Good copy. He does not look like a local Afghan. I think he has a weapon. Let me see. Now he has a weapon. All right. You got a clean shot. You get him? I got him. Two one Bravo three six. Hey, UD is clear. We're ready to move out. Uh, get your guys and move back down to the base. Three six out. And finally, EOD shows up. You know, we're telling, we're briefing Juan, hey, we just got hit, you know, twice. We need you to take care of this ID so we can get out of here. EOD's up. We're ready. Cool. Yep, let's get going. Yeah. It's a good thing that Sergeant Prince spotted the IED, because with that, he saved a lot of damn lives. Damn. Yeah, that looked like the actual charge. Yeah. From the point of us loading up and actually arriving in Metterlom, I bet we stopped like six or seven times due to the, the damage that the RPGs did on the vehicles. I remember we used one of the medics' um, surgical tape. For yeah, the, uh, tape the brake for lines. The, for the tape of the brake lines, and uh, we made it through, so they're talking about adapting and overcoming. I specifically remember thinking, gosh damn it, can you just leave us alone? Right. Give us a day. day. Yeah, give for us one a day. day. Can you just leave me alone for one day? <laughs> yeah. Let me go do this. Yeah. And then you can jack with me. All you we'll want play after tomorrow. that. All you want. Yeah. But yeah, they just, they wouldn't let up.
One of the things that Damon did was he, he went out with the interpreter by himself without his guys. Finally got to the point where the interpreter was very nervous. Um, he didn't even like it. And so his wife called me and said, hey, I think you need to talk to your son. He's kind of putting himself in harm's way. And so the next time he called, I talked to him and I said, hey, I know you're trying to bridge the gap and you're trying to be a good soldier, but you know, we just want you home. We don't want you getting hurt. And he said, yeah, I know dad, but you know, this is something I have to do to show trust. So he did what he believed in. As a result, we found out at the funeral that 350 Afghan uh, leaders and village people came to his ascending off because he did touch them. A couple weeks after Damon died, I was told that Lieutenant Lehan was not going to be replaced. We were completely satisfied with this. We had created that family and didn't want anybody else in it. We were gonna fight with what we had and we were gonna continue on and get the mission done. When Lee Han got killed, it was the first time we had lost somebody. A lot of us, and to include me, wanted that, that revenge to go out and kick some ass and get them back. But at the same time, you know, being in a leadership role, I had to make sure that everybody stayed calm, cool, and collective as a team. The second platoon was going to conduct a KLE somewhere towards Alshane, DC. I'm on the cop for QRF, and we get a call saying seconds, you know, hit an IED. Three, two, three, six. Three, six, three, two, go ahead. Hey, get you guys out, and uh, let's push on the uh, east side of this little brush right here through the corn. See if we can spot this guy. Camera rolling? Yeah, I just started it up again. Yeah. Let's give him a breathe. I want to welcome everybody to damn sure bad Afghanistan. We've got uh, Daniel Marquez on station with me. Uh, just had an IED blast. Uh, we're going to try to find this little uh, board engine down here at the cord. Uh, oh, shoot his fucking ass out. off. I'm going to shoot him. Shit's going to be crazy. Hey, Sergeant Prince. Yeah. You got that incendiary? Yeah. You should let me have it. <laughs> hey, we're going to go in there. All right, let's move. Look at the size of that hole. Gosh, damn, it's a big one. Dude, no wonder we couldn't find it. It was damn dug underneath the asphalt. Hey, see if we can spot the wire. You know, the money comes from, from America to pay these Afghan contractors to, to build these roads. But at the same time, the Taliban uses their funds and power to come in and have these, these construction workers put these IEDs in the road as they're paving over it. You know, there's little to no chance to even be able to know that they're under there. All right, hey, hey, push out. See if you can find an end of the wire. Rod, you got spread out a little bit. Hey, you guys let me know if you see anything on the ground. Three, 
26, be advised, we have eyes on your element uh, as you're moving to the cornfield. Roger, I'll copy all. 360. Hey, you guys stay spread out. Sir, this looks like the end of it. That's the end of it. He can't be too far off. He could be right out there in that corn. Hey, when we push through this corn, they'll try to be quiet so we can hear this guy moving. Hey, make sure you guys stay spread out. All right, hey, just push up to the edge. I'll stop right here. You guys stay spread out. Three six, be advised that there is smoke coming from the village. I'm not sure if it's an indicator of negative activity. I want you to be cautious that we have eyes on as well. I'll copy. Just keep walking out into the open. You like to think that the, the people that are leading your counterpart A and A forces are, are on your side, but who's to say? Who's to say who they're taking money from? Who's to say who their allegiances are to? Hey, sir, should we follow? Sir, are we going? No. Hey, we're not pushing any farther. There's a bait for an ambush. To advance any further through the corn was just not tactically a good idea, in my opinion. So we pulled back and, and didn't go any further. We want to fight on our terms. We don't want to fight below our strength. After being in Afghanistan for nearly six months, you could really start to feel the bond that had been created. You've already weeded out all the guys that are too scared that have made it known that they don't want any part of the fighting. What's left is brothers, and that's it. We would have these late night family talks on the Hesco's, just making fire pits and kind of reflecting. <laughs> Sergeant Colson found his appetite on every mission we went and was always managing to find food somehow. Sergeant Prince, uh, a canine officer back in the States, even adopts this puppy. Well, there's Prince with his new puppy. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. There you go. You big dummy. Prince found his canine unit. Like, Screw that. But you could never shake the feeling that that one big mission was, was right around the corner. Operation Brass Monkey was going to be one of the largest missions that we were going to do. When me and my platoon sergeant seen the plan that they had just came up with and where we were going to be, we immediately felt like we were at extreme disadvantage. Just in case you all don't see this, uh, it was good knowing all of you. Megan, I love you. Uh, Jesse, I hope you don't die too. You'll be all right. The first night that we were planning to get picked up and brought out there, uh, we were told the mission was canceled. So you know, I passed it out to all the guys, hey, you know, stand down, we're canceled. Then the next day we hear, hey, it's back on. You guys are going tonight. Spin everybody back up. Hey, we're going tonight, get ready. And sure enough, it got canceled again. The battalion commander said, it's done, we're not going. And I remember going and laying down to sleep that night, just kind of relaxed, nothing to worry about. It was either 5.30 or 6 in the morning. Sergeant Duff beats on the door. The mission's back on. Here's the time the birds are going to be here to pick you up.
Ultimately, the goal of the mission was to clear the valley. We knew there was Taliban in the area, we wanted to locate them and take their arms away from them. Basically, we were going into no man's land. We were going back into a place that no American forces had ever been before. signed up for. My bird landed in our position further to the northeast, and my platoon sergeant and his guys landed lower in the valley. Hey, our grid is 92698. The plan was, once we hit the ground, set up 360 security and hold tight until daybreak. Hey, Johnson, you're scanning over there, right? Scan from here to there. Hill, you scan from there to there. As daybreak was approaching and light was coming, we instantly got a worse feeling because now we could actually see the type of terrain we had just been dropped in. So I sent two of my guys down to the edges to find a way down the cliff. Look how steep that shit is. Straight down right there. Dude, there's no way we're getting to the bottom of that. And they came back and they was like, sir, there's no way, you know, there's no way we're getting down this. This is the Haqqani network here. You have the Haqqani network and you have some Taliban offshoots and just freaking thugs. And then, no, we're battling the Haqqani network. We haven't fought the Haqqani network yet. There are four JPELD targets in this area alone. JPELD means they got a hit out on their head. And uh, in this area alone, there are four. So yeah. Keep down and keep your eyes open too. I have no idea what's out this back way. I remember sitting in, in a valley talking with somebody and we came to the conclusion that, you know, if we die here, the worst part of dying for us is that the hair on our arms won't raise up at our funeral when they play the national anthem. Hey, John, anything? No news is good news. Thanks, Kenny. Hey, well, Bravo, you, you see right between those trees? Yeah. Big yeah. rock on that ridge? Yeah. Just to the right of it. Yeah, I can see. If we can get over to that, I bet we can make it up that side. Thank you, Mr. Roger. Roger, 36. From what I'm seeing, uh, we've got vertical danger areas. There's no way we're going to be able to get through this way. Break. We can back up with 3-3. Three, three. We're going to move back to your uh, your location. Over. Roger, that's a good copy. 3-6-0. And then just kind of out of nowhere, this little fella comes up out of the riverbed. Hey, sir, we got a kid coming up out of the riverbed. Hey, bring him right <laughs> over here. Hey, Gunner, go grab the turf. Hey, Prince, go ahead and bring that kid up here. Hey, ask him where he's from. Ask him where he came from. He just so happens to be from the village we're going to. 
he spoke perfect English. He's like, just go down this uh, little goat trail, you know, there's a riverbed and you can cross there. You never really know who your friends and enemies are. <laughs> the country's entirely corrupt at every level. Generations of people who know nothing but war, you know? And uh, uh, they're, they're very self-serving. And the boy takes my other two guys back down there and he shows them how he got up. So they come back to me like, see, yeah, sir, we can make it down there. You know, it's gonna be tough and dangerous, but you know, if we have to go, this is this is the only way we're gonna be able to go. Three two, three two, three six. Three six, three two, go ahead. Hey, be advised, I need you guys to pull security on this side. Myself and uh, three three are gonna make our way down this side. Over. Hey, Jordan, keep eyes on that riverbed. They're going to go ahead and move through. What do you say? Be ready and wait for my order. It's on burn. Hey, they said get ready and wait for the order. Hey, 36 Romeo 37. Can you just relay uh, a Taliban and uh, other enemy traffic break? They were calling out where we were, how many guys we had. They pointed out that we were in two different locations. Radio traffic from LOVI. Break. They're calling out locations on our movement. So make sure you guys got a head on a swivel and uh, get ready. Over. We can take a lot of uh, ammunition from the house. Hey, Sergeant Byrne, they're getting the ammunition from the house right now. Hey, this is uh, Arrow 36, go ahead. Roger, uh, 36, just let us know if you're set in. We'll uh, conduct movement to the riverbed, over. We're set in, you guys go ahead and move this way. Roger, 3 2, we're moving, over. It's good copy, 36 out. Sergeant Floyd sent me up front. I, I took point of our element, and Sergeant Prince took up the, the trail. Yep, we got a guy. All right. See uh, the very tip top? Just to the right of that, we got a guy. Let's see if he has a weapon light as I said. I can't tell if this guy's got a weapon or not. Hey, Sergeant Byrne, he's got a weapon. It looked like an RPG. Hey, your rifle.
you have them good in your, in your sights. There's a slab of rock he's hiding under. stuff lying over my head and a camelback landing in front of me. So I knew something bad happened and uh, Trees. Grab that weapon. Go, man. I need you to stop his bleeding as soon as I got it. Let's go, boys. Move. Move. Move, move, move. Hey, LT. I'll show you right where I saw him. Where, man? That RPG came from that fucking big rock face 100 meters. Straight it right, right there. Right there. It came right on top of that big rock. Right, let's get some mortars down here. Mortars. I got one there. Anybody with mortars? Anybody with mortars? Bring them down. You got a mortar in your pack. Get it out. Hey, Alex. Anybody with mortars, this bring them down! Four, seven, six <laughs> meters. Hey, Alex. At a two, six, three degrees, be advised, we just played a 60 degree. 320, the motherfucker. 320, go up. Come there, stay right there, I got more rounds. Come hey, up 10 meters, up 10 meters. No fascist Hey! Hey, keep your eyes on that road over there. Sounds like they have reinforcements on their way. We're, we're spread pretty thin, and if they come at us, they got us. Oh, I know. Roger, from that last impact, move up the ridge approximately 50 to 60 meters. All right, no more mortars. No more mortars. Cease fire. Bombs inbound. Once the engagement went to a lull, it uh, gave me the ability to assess ca casualties a little bit better. All right, let's get the head count. Keep going, brother. Keep going. Almost there. Nice and. Almost there. Almost two. there. Keep Seven. Going. Keep going. Let's go, guys. Keep, keep going, moving. Guys. Smith. Keep going. Almost there. Keep going. 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 Almost there, dude. Taurus. Almost there. Sherlock. Almost there. Fuck, I'm missing one. 
Watch up there, watch up there. You got it? Yeah. There you go. Hey, what's up? I'll relay. Hey, Sergeant Prince is hit. Oh, one shot or what? What? Where the hell did he hurt? Alex and I, we uh, took off kind of back that direction and started looking for prints, but that's the guy that I was missing. Where's he at? Fuck. And I take off running down to where Floyd's at. Gunner, start calling the nine line for him. Right now. Gunner, make it quick. 37, I come around kind of a corner, and Floyd's standing right up in the middle of the trail. Then I stop. You know, he's just looking at me with a with a blank stare on his face, and he, uh, you know, he said Prince is dead, and he's falling off the side. Give me southwest, 150 meters down the ridge line, large group of trees. Just now right beside him. Brown Caveras call sign, Juliet Bravo. You doing all right? Let's calm down. Remember your training. Just let the rounds fly, all right? Sorry, Prince, man. You can't worry about that now, all right? Right now, we gotta make sure you get home. Yeah, I got hit some frag and took my leg out. Hey guys, we gotta move. We got some out, all right? We took a few minutes. I got a team together, and you know, I said, all right, as soon as this bomb hits them, we're going to a group of us are gonna go down and get and get prints. Two zero three, heck two eight, cleared hot. After the first dust of the bomb, he calls to Alex, we're gonna go down and get Prince. Okay? Roger that. I'm overwatching. Roger that. Hey, I'm going with you. I'm leaving my kit right here. Hey, get this off. Get this off. Suck it up. All right. Let me suck it up. All right. Copy that. Sir, one mic you'll be in. This may be danger close. Hey, one mic. We got a bomb inbound. Hey, three three. I need you to continue with that nine line. I need it ASAP. You need to tell the birds they need to be escorted out here. You got enemies at 200 meters from our location. Roger. Line one. Whiskey Delta. Niner one. Bus four up, four niner. Five two. Eight eight four. Break. Line two. Arrow three six Romeo. Forty seven decimal five. Line eight. U.S. Soldier. Later. Hey, man. Hey, hey. Stay with it. Stay with it. What do you got to do? What's the next thing you got to do? I got this one. What's the next thing you got to do? I got this. Tell me what it is out loud. Say it. Make sure everybody's safe. And I get the nine line called in. Can we get the break? Is the here? nine line done? Roger. What's the next thing you got to do? Make sure that. Okay. Don't flag your weapon. Roger. Okay. Who do you got to make sure is okay? I got to make sure Max and Tevis and Sergeant Ford are okay. Where are they? They're down there where they were hit. I'll tease them checking on them now. Okay, so you need to go back there. Okay. Right? Is that what you're saying? Okay. Are you Are you good to go back there? Roger, Sean. You sure? Yes. 37, 36, go ahead. Roger, again, line one and line eight, over. Roger, line one, Whiskey Delta, Niner, one, four, five, two. Five two eight eight five. Nine 
Nine lines called up. Three seven, three six, three five. It's bomb inbound. Get down. Even shoot four more rockets. They're gonna, they're gonna shoot four more rockets. Four more rockets. Hey. Dude, heck of two eight. The guys knew that by going down to get Prince, that they themselves may not make it back up. It didn't matter. You're never going to leave your brother behind. You know, at worst, if an RPG did hit us, you know, we just, you know, deal with it after it happened. Come on, come on. I'm gonna hit that shit already. Tell him you're better than fucking man. Hey, bomb him out. Come on, there it is. Hold this rocket. Hey, save your ammo! Save your ammo! Let's go get them! Let's go get them! Let's move. Hey, we're going down to get them. Watch out. Dude, be advised out. We're currently going to kick shit and mortars. I got comms. I'm going to go. Roger that. Let's go. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Let's go down and get them. Stay spread. Tell T, stay in the middle. Okay. All right, spread out, all right? Spread out, stay spread. That way if he shoots it again, he only gets one of us. Stay spread. Hey, Sergeant Burn. They're preparing for another attack right now. They think they're heroes now, and they're going to hit us again. Hey, 3637, they're going in for another attack. You got security. We gotta get out of this area. We can get that bird to drop the hoist right here. Let me frag his kid with the regular one. Oh, the corn out of this way, out of this area, all right? You might need to know a guy down here. We need another guy down here. Send one more guy down here. Alex, take the weapons, all right? Hey, we gotta get his kit. Where's his rifle? Go my way. On up. One, two, three. burn sounds like they got somebody with that bomb hey tell three six there's a flag up in those fucking trees a white flag up right below those rocks right there just below in that tree line there's a white flag hey, fucking, here. you grab one side i
Gunter. Air Force Sergeant. Sergeant First Class Byrne. Air Force Sergeant. Sergeant Prince. Sergeant Michael Prince. Sergeant Michael Lee Prince. Sergeant Prince, you were a husband? A father? A friend to many? And will always be a brother to us? You will never be forgotten, brother. Thank you for the time and the memories you spent with us. When's the last time you've seen any of them come by?
all smoked mentally, physically, emotionally. But I think what defined us, having, having lost those two guys, you, we still were able to maintain that certain level of professionalism. You know, we're gonna finish this, which is not gonna be in vain. You know, that's just, that just kind of solidifies the, the bond, man, the, you know, the, the brotherhood. I'd be lying if I said I didn't miss it. You know, it was a shitty place to have to live for, you know, a year, but it was our place, you know, and we, we, we owned it, and, and I'd be lying as well if I said that, that I didn't miss it. For as sucky as it was, it was our suck. Yeah. And you woke up every day knowing what your suck was, you know, and more importantly, who is gonna go through your suck with you? Yeah, what was the saying? There's no stronger bond than a shared pain. Well, that's sure true. Couldn't be any more true. Yeah. I'll see you, man. See you. We good, man? Sir. I'll see you. Always good seeing you. You too. All right. Take care, guys. See you, man. There's no way for me to express how important it is that I get to look you in the eye and talk to you today, okay? So what I want to tell you is that term citizen soldier and what it means. Now think about 1775, when Boston is under siege and the Redcoats are coming, and Paul Revere gets on his horse and rides through the countryside saying the British are coming, the British are coming, all right? And blacksmiths and innkeepers drop their hammer, drop their, their plates and towels and bedding, drop what they're doing and move to the green at Lexington and Concord to meet an enemy that would threaten their communities. We've been doing this stuff since 1636, all right? The citizen soldier has been alive since 1636, over 370 years. this whole story because I need you. Your state needs you and your community needs you. 
right? We need you to choose to keep the title citizen soldier. There is something noble, something honorable, something romantic about that term. And I just hope that you guys take that term citizen soldier with you till the day you die. This is Roach. Welcome to this episode of MTV Cribs. But as you can see, uh, we're remodeling right now. Ain't got much. Uh, got a bunch of grenades. Got my gun. Got a machine gun with fucking thermals. Uh, got a nice big rock wall. There's a hot tub down there. There's a pool down there, a little creek thing. Oh shit, we're recording. Do a dance. Oh shit. Hey. Okay. Go ahead, Goody. This is pissed off guitar player. This sounds like shit. <laughs>
Attend to the dark Lying cloaked with inside To defend this heart We must cut like knives So wait for me On wounded knee Cut from thee Oh so Faithfully And when the light goes out It's the touch, it's the touch It's the touch that shines on Should I lie when it's cold by my side? And how can I live when you're so supposed to die? You keep saying, wait for me, wait for me. 